Just a couple minutes after the hour here, I think we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, again, uh, welcome everyone um, to the Information Technology Academy recruiting presentation for the Art Oneida community uh, 2022. Um, just a couple of quick housekeeping notes. There will be a question and answer period following our presentation, but you can also feel free to enter questions into the chat section. Um, and we can try to answer those questions uh, at that time as well. Uh, before we get started with our formal presentation, however, I would like to ask Artley Skenendor to do an opening prayer for this evening. So Artley, please take it away. Uh, good evening, everybody. I'm uh, first like to express my uh, thanks and gratitude for the opportunity to speak to you all this evening. And in so doing, I'd I'd like to just uh, remind you a few uh, powerful words we have in our language that bring us together. One of those is uh, Galela Josla, and that's the encouragement. And when you look at the ITA program and the opportunity to journey along with your learning, it's really about offering that encouragement to you to learn as much as you can and to learn and feel about where you are on this path of learning for yourself and for your community. The other word is Ganalungwatsla, and Ganalungwatsla is the root word of love. It means to have compassion. It means to have that understanding that we extend to each other. And then the last one that I wanted to share with you is Gahnigulio. And we say that Gahnigulio Nindahnun and Galiwi is that the good mind comes from sharing the good words. And over this journey of learning that you will have, that's the one of the most important encouragements that I'd like to share with you and your parents this evening, is that you will learn the power of your word and you will learn the power of your good mind. And that with those two things, you can make not only a contribution for yourself, but for your family and for your community. And that's the thoughts of, uh, of opening that I wanted to share with you. And we bundle them together by saying, Yo Sanunya, then you Bahawi, then Gajokwa Gwe, then Gahe lead and I call it one again, and Yo Sanunya, then Gale Gale Josla, then Da Noon and Ganalong Quatsla, then Tohige, then Gahi Gulion and Gali Wi, then Agagwe, then Tungwa Wehin and Skanad and Bon of Tunyun and Swakwe, Danigadi Hui, then Tony Huntu Hugging and Nigot Nego. And that's how it should be carried around in our minds is that good thought of encouragement, that good feeling of compassion, and that good feeling of our power of our words that we can share our good minds with each other. So I thank you for the honor of opening and bundling your, your thoughts for the beginning of the meeting. And I hope you have a good journey of learning. Dane. Oh. Thank you, Artley, very much for those wise words. Um, and uh, very, very much appreciate uh, you honoring us with uh, the opening this evening. Um, I would like to um, now introduce uh, Ron Jetty, the Executive Director of the Information Technology Academy, um, for a brief introduction from his end. Thank you, Chris. And uh, thank you, Artley, for kicking us off with the uh, uh, the the blessing there, the positive uh, words of encouragement, and uh, want to also say thank you to Artley for his uh, years of service on the IT Advisory Board. Greatly appreciate the engagement there. Um, so yes, uh, welcome everyone, uh, and and again thanks, Chris. Uh, I'll just say a little bit about the history of the program, and then turn it over to the staff to introduce themselves. So in alignment with UW-Madison's diversity framework, the Information Technology Academy is an innovative pre-college initiative for diverse students at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Housed in the Division of Information Technology and in partnership with UW-Madison's People Program, ITA has three program sites. So in addition to students in Oneida, we also serve students in Lac de Flambeau and Madison. Our goal is to increase the enrollment rates and success of diverse students at UW-Madison. 
and ITA students build knowledge and skills through hands-on technology, coursework, academic preparation, tutoring, internships, mentoring, and community service. Our coursework is 50% academic preparation and 50% information technology preparation. So in addition to learning a lot about technology, our goal is to have our seniors be competitive applicants for admission to UW-Madison. And we've got a great uh, number of staff here tonight uh, to talk about the program and some program alumni that you're gonna hear from. You're gonna, so I gave you the sweeping overview here, but we're gonna get in depth and uh, you're, you're gonna get all your questions answered as well. So welcome, and uh, I'll, I'll put it back to Chris to uh, proceed on with the uh, rest of the introductions here. Thanks everyone. Thanks, Ron. Um, well, again, I introduced myself earlier. I'm Christopher Kilgore. I'm the Tribal Programs Manager for the Information Technology Academy. I work both in the Oneida and the Lac Flambeau communities, as well as doing some of the programming and assisting with some of the summer events in the Madison area. Um, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and kind of go around here and introduce or have our staff introduce themselves. Uh, and I'm going to just do it in order of the uh, photos that I have on my screen. So um, Brenda, you are uh, first on my photo list here for introductions, so take it away. Hi, my name is Brenda and I am the college prep instructor for the tribal sites. I also am an alumni from ITA Madison, class of 2010, a long time ago. And um, what else? I think that's it. <laughs> Thanks for that, Brenda. Uh, Dion, you're next in line. My name is Dion Jacob. I am the Student Success Outreach Coordinator for the Oneida site for the ITA program. Um, I reside in Oneida along with two kids and a dog named Curly. Oh, my children are Emily and Jessica, by the way. Um, thank you. Thanks for that, Dion. Liliana, you are next. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. Um, I'm Liliana. I am an academic instructor at the ITA Madison site where I teach ACT prep and college prep classes. I am also um, an alum of ITA. I graduated in 2017 and I am a current graduate student at UW Madison. Thanks for that, Liliana. Um, Ninoska, you are next. Hi, everyone. My name is Ninoska. I am the lead technology instructor for our tribal sites. So I get to oversee all of our technology curriculum and write it and look at how it's being implemented along with teaching our incoming sophomores their tech course. Um, I am a ITA alum class of 2015. Um, I'm a UW Madison alum. I've been with ITA for six years now, um, and two of those have been full-time. Thanks for that, Nanoska. Um, Brandon, you're next. Hello, everyone. My name is Brandon Runzabad. I am the digital media assistant here at ITA, um, and I graduated from ITA in the Madison class of 2017. Um, Hope you guys all have a great time tonight. Thanks for that. Um, Julie, you are next. Hi, my name is Julie Hankstrom, and I am Dion's counterpart in Lacta Flambeau. So I'm the Student Success Outreach Coordinator for the tribal site in Lacta Flambeau. So nice to see you all tonight. Thank you, Julie. And Last but absolutely not least, I would like to introduce Marsha Lovett. Hi, good evening and welcome everyone. My name is Marsha Lovett and I am a program manager with ITA program. This is my second, in, um, in the middle of my second year, no, yeah, in the middle of my second year with ITA. And um, I'm glad to see everybody here this evening. And I will also throw in a note so we don't forget that this presentation is being recorded. So as you go through and you're getting all the valuable information from staff, don't feel pressure to try to remember or write it down. Just sit back and enjoy the presentation and know that in a couple of days, it'll be posted to our website. So again, thank you so much for joining us this evening. 
Thank you for that, Marcia, and thanks for that reminder. Um, yeah, it will definitely be up and posted, so you can not only go back and review, but you can also share it out with other folks. So, all right, well, without further delay, I will go ahead and uh, say that we're gonna get started with the presentation formally here. Um, again, uh, welcome to the 2022 recruiting information session for the United Community uh, from the Information Technology Academy. Um, so uh, I will just go ahead and ask for the next slide and we'll, we'll talk about why we're here. Well, the question is often asked, why do we do what we do? Why do the ITA staff work and do the things that we do? And, and what's the point to all of this? And uh, this picture here is in exactly the point to all of this. Um, our goal is for this moment exactly. This moment is, this picture was taken at the ITA graduation. This picture is in Madison looking out over Lake Mendota at Dejo Paul. And um, our main goal is to see our students within our program succeed, not only within the Information Technology Academy classes and curriculum, but also obviously in your high school career as well. Our goal is to see you succeed, to see you matriculate through ITA, matriculate through high school, and ultimately go on um, to college and beyond. Next slide, please. Um, so in ITA, we do a lot of um, academic training, and these are the classes that we teach during the academic year. We also have some um, supplementary classes during the summer, but our main stuff is here. So we do study skills, teaching students how to um, find the best study habits for themselves during, during high school, but also to carry on in higher education. Then we do a leadership course to help them learn uh, more about their own leadership styles and the leadership styles that they can strive for. Uh, we do a career development course where we teach them the essentials to be a, um, a person working in the real world. Uh, we have an ACT prep course where we help them improve on the scores that they already have. And finally, the college prep course where we teach them the basics of the application, FAFSA, and anything else they would need in college. So I'm going to give you a brief overview of our technology curriculum. Uh, we teach a variety of courses and topics. Um, these are some of the ones that we teach. So our students get a many uses of computer where they get introduced to a computer, they get to take it apart. Um, they get to really understand how computers work. They have an introduction to video production camp where they get the chance to create their own movies and write scripts and work with big film equipment. They have a multimedia design course where they get to learn three units, which are graphic design, sound design, as, long, as well as web design. They have a computer systems and programming where they get to learn how applications are coded and they get the chance to write their own code. They have technology startups where they use their tech knowledge in order to create a prototype for a product that would help them solve said social challenge. And they culminate their time with ITA with the senior capstone class. So this course allows students to take the time to use the skills that they have learned and create projects that they can then showcase in a portfolio that they can use, whether that is for a job or for college. So what you see here is uh, a really great example of basically a digital, digital portfolio that was created by one of the um, ITA Madison students, Jennifer Zhang. And uh, basically what it does is it showcases not only an incredible amount of talent with her putting this entire um, a series of pieces together, but it on separate pages um, basically showcases different interests and different skill sets that Jennifer has. Um, there's a recording here, as you can see, of, of music that she's done. Uh, she composed uh, quite a few pieces and performed them. Um, a lot of artwork was displayed. Uh, and then here, as you can see, there's also basically a bio uh, about Jennifer and, and who she is and some interests. 
Uh, on the upper left tile here, you can also see that there are different drop down menus that have been created. So this is essentially her website, standalone website that people could go to and find out more information about Jennifer, find out uh, what she does, what her interests are, but also some of the work that she's done. And, and this is one of the examples of that type of um, senior capstone project that creates a digital footprint, a digital portfolio, something that she can take with her, obviously use in the college setting, but obviously beyond that in the work setting, she has a polished and, and quite impressive um, kind of uh, resume business card, if you will, that she can have folks go to and take a look at. So this is just an example, one example uh, of just some of the amazing things that our seniors are producing and taking pieces that they've done throughout their time within ITA. Next slide, please. So within ITA, one of the things that we do really kind of pride ourselves on is making sure that there are constantly ongoing resources for learning and growth throughout your time with ITA. We have tutoring sessions. Uh, we have digital tutoring sessions where students can log in on certain days and connect with tutors for both ITA work as well as regular classwork at the high school level. We have uh, internships where students, uh, the summer before their senior year would uh, within our tribal communities would uh, take a look at what kind of things they may be interested in as far as a career is concerned and where they might be able to use some of these skills that they've been developing within ITA and then do a two-week internship during our summer institutes. Uh, then just so everyone notices here on the slide, we've actually got several things with asterisks next to them. And the reason those asterisks are there currently is obviously because of uh, COVID protocols some of these things may actually shift as far as what is in person and what is not. Um, so we wanna make sure that we do go through all of the different possibilities that students will experience and encounter within ITA as a program. Um, but please do understand that uh, as time progresses, some of these things may be slightly different in schedule, duration, et cetera, um, based on what's going on at the time. So um, Brenda, I asked you our, in our previous presentation to talk a little bit about Silicon Valley, if you wouldn't mind doing that again. Um, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, so Silicon Valley is a um, trip where students can apply to attend. We take 15 students um, and those students get to go with us to California, to Silicon Valley. And we have a variety of stuff that we do there. Um, it's a learning trip. So we do a lot of uh, presentations about what ITA is. They're basically ambassadors. Um, but also they get to have fun. Um, we visit the city and um, learn a lot about that. Um, and uh, also we visit a lot of tech companies so that um, students get an idea of what working in technology means. And being Silicon Valley, the hub of technology, we get to visit a lot of corporations like um, Google, SunDesk, and among others. And they just get to know people who actually work in those corporations and um, learn what they do and see it hopefully themselves working in tech one day. Thanks for that. Um, another experience that students have, uh, again, when we're indeed seeing each other face to face and in person is an annual trip down to campus for the spring conference. Uh, during our spring conference event, it typically is the first week in April or weekend in April. Students will come down to campus. Uh, we have buses that bring students from their communities down to campus, both our Oneida community and our Lac Flambeau community students would be busing down to Madison area. Um, we'd be staying um, in the Madison area Friday night and Saturday night. During the time that you're down there, you'll be engaging with the Madison cohort students during Saturday session. You'll be at doing a variety of activities throughout the community, kind of getting to see what campus is like and being able to kind of visit some other areas as well and uh, then you head back on Sunday. So it's a Friday through Sunday event. And then the summer before your senior year, you have both internships going on during the two week session that we were normally meeting in person uh, in each community. And then after that first week in August, our seniors, uh, rising seniors would be coming down to Madison again and staying on campus for a week and basically experiencing what college life is like on a certain level. You'd be taking some classes, you'd be visiting a whole variety of other places on campus and off campus. Yeah, it also give you an opportunity to really start diving into your um, campus exploration or college, excuse me, college exploration, uh, application processes and that sort of thing. 
Um, and that's actually quite often uh, when folks report back about their experience within ITA, that's one of their um, top, top picks as far as things that they enjoy the most. Um, basically, the, the one thing I do want to kind of reiterate with all of this is uh, this is all about creating resource and creating more um, networks for students and their success. This picture here uh, is a great example of that. Uh, we have representatives here with our students uh, and the folks that are here visiting our students this day are from the Native American Center for Health Professionals on UW campus. Um, in fact, a couple of them are, are Oneida community members. And um, this is yet another example of a variety of other partners, both on campus and off, that connect with our students and show them a whole variety of different options within the various uh, professional realms uh, to kind of explore career paths uh, and also paths within the school system itself. Next slide, please. So, you know, the, the big question is why as a student should you get involved? And I know a lot of times the answer our students give us is, well, because my parents or my uncle or my auntie or my cousin or my uncle or my friend said uh, I should do it. Um, and I'll, I'll, I, I will, you know, acknowledge that that can indeed be the initial case, but um, I want to give you a few lists, a few, few items here on this list of reasons why it's worth it. Uh, why should you get involved? You can gain a lot of amazing technological experience. Oftentimes you, do, you are doing some of these things in high school already, or a lot of folks are already interested on some level or another with technology and uh, have been messing around with computers for a while now or app development or things like that. But ITA does have a lot to offer when it comes to technology and specifically how, how to use that technology in, uh, again, school settings, but also in the professional realm. And oftentimes these projects are designed so that you can take certain aspects of those things that we're teaching and really go with them as far as what really interests you directly. There's a quite a bit of academic support. We talked about tutoring previous uh, in one of the previous slides, and I can't stress enough that this is most definitely a what we can do to help you succeed throughout your time with us. So. Uh, oftentimes we have students that will reach out and ask for help on certain projects. We have staff members that are, you know, pretty much always available uh, and, and available via email and sometimes, of course, during the tutoring sessions as well. But we also want to do what we can to help if you're having issues or struggles or challenges in, at the school level. And we'll connect with, with staff there oftentimes or have tutors that can help you with different subjects within your time in, at the high school level. Um, so that's extremely important and useful to have that extra layer of support as you're going through both our program and your regular schoolwork. Another thing that's, that's awesome is you gain a whole bunch of new friends. Uh, like I said, oftentimes we have folks from all three communities with Oneida, Lacta, Flambo, and Madison getting together, not only in person, but also digitally. So you're starting to learn new people, you're learning about new people, you're getting to know folks. And uh, inevitably, and I know that some of the folks that are here uh, presenting tonight, some of our staff can, can you know, really attest to the fact that you meet a lot of people and quite a few of those folks remain your friends long after you're done with school. While students are participants in our program, they are also issued a computer. So when you start in our program, uh, we give you a laptop that has all of the software necessary to do all of the projects that we're working on. Um, we help you orient with that computer so that you're familiar with how to navigate through it and to use it uh, not only for ITA work, but you're obviously welcome to use it for your school work as well. It's yours to use throughout the time that you're with us. Uh, and, um, you know, they, they're pretty nice laptops and they do have a, a good deal of space on them and, and a good deal of uh, options and software that folks can use uh, for their school work and, and for ITA stuff. Uh, if you do indeed complete the ITA program successfully, and obviously to complete your high school career successfully, apply for and are accepted at the University of Wisconsin-Madison specifically, um, you're eligible then for the People Scholarship, uh, which is a four-year academic scholarship that starts your freshman year and, and goes for those next four years. Um, at that level, at the college level, if you do become a People Scholar, there is a whole new team of people within the People program um, that are there to support similar to what we do here at the ITA high school level. Um, so you have a whole new team of staff and a whole new cohort of students to, to get to know and spend time with um, that help you and support you throughout your career within the college setting. 
the question oftentimes is, yeah, this looks too good to be true. How are you going to tell us that it's not, it doesn't cost anything, but there is actually no monetary cost to you. There is an asterisk at the end there because the one thing that uh, does indeed typically cost some money is if, for instance, students choose to go on the Silicon Valley trip, there is a cost to that. But there are also some scholarships available to help offset some of that cost. But other than that, your major investment within our program is your time. And uh, as you can see in this last point here, really all we're asking for you is commitment and dedication. We wanna make sure that you as a student are committed to getting this work done within ITA and participating in the, in the work that we're doing and participating in all of the activities that we do, um, but also obviously a commitment to yourself uh, and to your success in general and getting through not only our program, but obviously as importantly, through your high school level. Next slide, please. So the commitment. Um, the commitment to the ITA program is three years of time and hard work, which consists of a two week summer institute each year. Oneida's uh, summer institute is in June with Lexus Lambo coming in second in July. And then um, our one week spring conference, which is in April. The, the program can also consists of weekly online homework, which is a tech course and an academic course. Each week, it's approximately about one hour per course. So you're looking at two hours per week um, that we expect to have dedicated to ITA. And lastly, there is a one week senior residential experience, which is in August. And that would be for um, incoming seniors you know, your final year as a part of ITA. <clears throat> in addition to the three years of time and hard work, there is a 90% attendance and completion rate for meetings and assigned work. Um, because we don't meet very often, it is very important that when we do have those face-to-face -face times is that, that we, we are meeting as a cohort. And lastly, uh, work towards the 3.0 GPA by your senior year. Next slide, please. ITA commitment is also a three-way street, which is between ITA, the student, and the parent or guardian. For ITA, um, we provide instruction and support and preparation for college and beyond. The expectation for students is to complete the work in a timely manner, communicate with, communicate with other students and staff, and maintain a, a competitive grade point average. And lastly, the parent, parent and guardian support the students engage with parent circle meetings and communicate with ITA staff when needed. Um, when we all work together, we all thrive. So that's kind of the foundation that we, we built this program on. Next slide, please. Online coursework. Um, there is a lot of flexibility, but we also ask that you respect deadlines. Um, it's, it's, it's important to have be self-motivated and to have discipline when it comes to uh, when it comes to you know the homework and the assignments and making sure you're putting enough time aside to complete your ITA work. Um, you need a place to be productive. You know uh, your bedroom. You know I don't know if you, know, you might be a music listener or just you need silence. But you know in the middle of the living room, surrounded by your siblings, it's going to be you know pretty difficult to try to concentrate. Um, be comfortable with reaching out for help help us help you this is this is what we're here for and we want to help you succeed and that is you know that's the number one goal so help us help you and lastly get it done early you know i think we've all kind of still struggled with that whole procrastination thing you know even as adults so it's important to try to you know really key in on that at you know as a student as a young student because you know as you get into college adulthood it never goes away. It's always something that has to be worked on, you know, so get it done early. Next slide, please. So this is um, the timeline. Um, the application open on Monday and tonight we're doing our presentation. The applications will close then on Friday night, February 21st, actually at five o'clock. Then we will be reading applications and sending out notices um, by April 8th to let you know if you're waitlisted or being um, invited to an interview. And then 
our deadline to accept your admission into ITA will be May 27th. So what do you need uh, and how do you apply? Well, uh, at, at this stage, you're sitting here and listening and you're watching, which means that you have some interest. And so the next steps are as follows. Um, we need a copy of your ninth grade transcript. Um, and then in the application, there are three short answer questions. You'll need to fill out 100 to 200 words. That seems like a lot, but as you start to type and tell us about yourself and tell us, you know, give us some answers, um, kind of coming from your heart. Uh, it doesn't take very long to kind of fill up that 100 to 200 word uh, answer. Um, we'll also need a parent or guardian letter of support, and basically giving us some indication as to why the parent or guardian feels that you'd be a good fit as an ITA student or as a candidate. And uh, then a teacher or school counselor letter of recommendation. Uh, we have had in the past questions asked about uh, whether that could be from, for instance, an eighth grade teacher uh, or, or seventh grade teacher or a different teacher or counselor within the school. And the answer is yes. Uh, we definitely want to make sure that it's somebody that's familiar with who you are and who you are as not only a person, but as a student. And, um, and so then we'll ask for that letter of recommendation as part of the application process. Next slide, please. So again, the way to apply is go to the website, ita.wisc.edu. Um, there are multiple things on the website. There will be these recordings. There will be a little video that tells a little bit about the program. And there will also be a link to the application software. In that application software, choose ITA as the program that you're applying to. And then you just follow all the prompts and finish the application and submit it. And all of the parts then, again, need to be in by Friday, February 21st at 5 p.m. Um, this is my contact information if you want to jot it down. Or um, I know pretty much everyone on the call today. So actually, no, I know all of you guys. Um, this is my email and my cell phone. And if you have any questions, I'm here to help. I'm here to do whatever it takes. So let's get this done. And uh, I can't wait to see who all um, applies for this program. So at this point, we're at the, the question and answer. Um, I know that there may have been a couple of questions in the chat, but obviously, if you have any questions you'd like to add to that chat, that'd be fantastic. And we'd be happy to answer. Them. Well, if, uh, if we don't have too many, oh, go ahead. Um, so when there's three questions, is it a hundred per question or total to, to uh, respond as part of your application? That's a great question. Um, I think the question was, you broke up just a little bit there, but was it a hundred words per question or a hundred words total? Um, it's a good question. Um, yes. We ask that you answer approximately a hundred plus, a hundred to a hundred plus words per question. But again, um, you know, just like tests and, and multiple choice questions and that sort of thing, uh, if, you know, if you answer it in less than a hundred words, uh, you won't necessarily be penalized. It's basically more about what your answer says about you and, and kind of in answering that question. But yeah, that's that's on average per question. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Hey, Chris, before we go on to the next question, can I just kind of further exp um, expand on that answer too? Absolutely. So that's a it's a great question. I appreciate it being asked because that is a common, commonly asked question of our applicants. And I, I we don't want students to feel like this. there's a right or wrong answer with the essay questions, um, but this is definitely a great opportunity for us to get to know who you are. Um, we do look at each application through a holistic lens. And so, you know, after a while, we can only see the actual application and the grade reports, but we really look forward to seeing what students say in each of the essay questions. And it's nothing hard or difficult. It's just our opportunity to learn who you are as a student. Um, so 
the 100 to 200 words, like Chris said, it doesn't, before you know it, you've got it written. You're like, oh, I could say so much more. So don't, um, don't let that worry you, but look at it as an opportunity for us to get to know you um, off of what we can't see in the other materials that are submitted. Thanks for that, Marcia. Lisa, I see you have your hand up. Was that the, was that, um, do you have, uh, don't want you to get lost in the shuffle here. So go ahead with your question. Oh, thank you. Um, I just had a question about the um, types of career paths that participants in ITA end up doing in college. Um, so we're, you know, kind of looking at this as a possible option, but not really sure if it's a good fit for what um, Thurston would like to do when he gets to college. So what kind of like um, degrees do people pursue after completing this program? Well, I, I'm going to welcome other staff to answer this question as well, but I can give you an answer from my end first. And I would say if you were to take the uh, course catalog at the university and then just basically take your thumb and, and run your thumb through all those courses, I would say pretty much any one of those a student might land on. Um, uh, we do have students that are definitely interested in, in technology and computer sciences related degrees. We also have students that are involved in nursing and arts in um, um, it, I mean, medical fields, a law. Um, we actually just had one of our first, actually our, one of our first cohort students that's now in law school this uh, started this last year. So um, uh, it's, it is by no means specific only to technology as far as what students go on to pursue at the college level. There are just all kinds of different options and opportunities and students do definitely kind of run a wide gamut of, of different course um, subjects and different majors. Thank I'll you. Jump in as well, just because I have a bit of experience as well. Um, I didn't take the traditional path of going to UW right away, but uh, ITA was a great segue for me past that. So because of my resume with ITA and all the tech courses I had taken and certifications I had earned, I actually started working for American Family Insurance as a IT technician right out of high school. Um, they saw my resume with ITA and they brought me on. So. For about three years, I was working as a level one and a level two technician with uh, American Family Insurance. So that's just like one possible career path that you could definitely take after exiting the program. Is there anyone else that would like to talk about uh, for folks that have been through the ITA program, some of your career paths or, or majors? Um, I'll unmute here just to say that uh, we did get a question in one of our earlier sessions. Someone asked if prior tech knowledge is required for ITA, um, and I would say absolutely not. There is no prior tech knowledge required for any of the, the subject material that students learn in ITA. We start at a very beginner's level, and students go through all of the classes together with their cohorts. Um, so everything that we do is pretty user-friendly, and I, I think um, the biggest thing that we look for in students is just for a willingness to learn um, and intellectual curiosity about technology and really being able to um, think about what kinds of projects they might be interested in in our program, um, because we do cover a lot of subjects, a lot of different subjects um, like photography, video making, coding, um, and, and the list goes on. So. I would say that um, knowing your career path right away is not important. I don't really think any young student knows exactly what they want to go into, especially, you know, just in high school. Um, so, yeah, that's what I would say in terms of um, prior tech knowledge and experience. Thanks for that, Eliana. I can talk yeah. about my path. Um, I went through ITA, I graduated in the class of 15. And when I got to college, I actually majored in education. I was a double major of elementary and special ed, which had absolutely nothing to do with the things that I had learned in ITA. Um, however, I think it was extremely helpful. I think a lot of the things that we teach um, are extremely important in any career that you choose. I feel like my experience with ITA better prepared me for college, um, better prepared me to give presentations or even 
writing papers because I was really familiar with Word and I had no issues. Um, and some of the skills that you learn open so many different doors for students. In my case, uh, when we did Office Suite as a student, I learned a lot about spreadsheets. And when I was in college, I really wanted a research job and I was able to get a research job with a professor just being a sophomore in college because I had this knowledge that ITA had given me. Um, and I used my ITA knowledge even when I was teaching in a classroom, student teaching. And to my ITA knowledge is why I have my job right now. But I think there's nothing set. Like I changed my mind many times about my major and my career had nothing to do with ITA, but there's many ways to relate it back. Thanks for that, you know. Um, are there any other questions that we might be able to answer this evening? I want to make sure we get to anyone that has one. All right, well, one question I would like to ask staff, is there anything you could think of that tends to be a, a commonly asked question that we missed this evening? Well, one thing I was going to say is um, just to reiterate, if it was mentioned and I was not, I missed it, but I don't think um, with the tuition a scholarship at UW Madison, um, as students get to that point of junior year, senior year, and they're and they're thinking maybe they want to stay closer to home, um, or maybe they want to, you know, go to another school, um, and what would that mean for the scholarship? Um, for them. And so just want to say that there are options. You can do a direct, if you are admitted to UW-Madison, the scholarship is right there and ready for you for the next four years. Or if you rather go to a smaller school or a technical school or whatever, for whatever reason, that's fine. If you go somewhere for a year or two years and then want to transfer, the remaining portion of the scholarship is still at UW-Madison for you. So it is not uncommon for students to maybe go to um, another school for a year and then they have three years of the scholarship remaining um, if they want to come in as a transfer student. So I just wanted to reiterate that that's something that does um, come up. It's a commonly asked question and just want to make sure that's clear um, for everybody. Thanks for that, Marcia. And I guess I would like to just add to that, that we've had um, students ask if, what if I decide I don't want to go to college right away and I want to go work somewhere or do something like that. And to, and to Brandon's point, um, we do have students that, that do go off and uh, do something else other than school for a year or maybe two or sometimes more. And then when you decide to go back to school, you'll be starting as a freshman. So if you decided to apply for at that point, the university and were you know, accepted uh, still, obviously, um, that scholarship is still there waiting for you. So it doesn't necessarily expire if you decide to take some time off between high school and college. Any other questions? All right, well, um, hearing or seeing no other questions uh, in the chat or, or verbally. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and thank everyone um, here tonight for joining us and uh, for all the questions that were indeed asked. I would like to thank the staff for participating and um, answering questions and giving this presentation. I'd like, of course, again, to thank Artley for his opening and um, most definitely looking forward to seeing folks' applications showing up. Uh, prior to our application deadline and uh, you know with wishful thinking looking forward to seeing folks names and faces uh, after the applications have been reviewed and accepted so again I'd like to thank everyone for this evening for joining us for the ITA recruiting conversation in Oneida 2022 have a great rest of your evening and have a good week take care everybody thank you